What's going on guys? So I'm going to be supercharging my 2007 uh, Saturn Ion. It's a 2.2 liter. Now there's lots of forums out there on guys doing their cobalts and their ions, etc. So it's a very possible project. You just kind of have to consolidate a lot of parts and there's lots of forums that you got to read through. So goal here is to sort of condense everything together to avoid what otherwise would be a lot of searching that people would be doing um, in terms of how to put the sensors in, what to do for tunes, and what specific parts that you're going to be looking for. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few for this exact build. So let's start off with the obvious, the main part, which is the M62 supercharger. So I got all this stuff for about 800 bucks. I bought used, it's not too bad, but just bear in mind, if you buy used, you're probably gonna have to refurbish a couple things. So what I did with the supercharger here, uh, I have a 3.1 pulley from ZZ Performance. Uh, so while I was taking that off the shaft and doing all that, I figured I may as well redo the bearings inside. So here are the old bearings. You can buy bearing kits for pretty cheap, about 50 US. So new bearing kit, new oil seals inside the supercharger snout. So that I know for sure they're going to be okay. Uh, I also changed the oil inside of it. I just used one of these filler tubes. Now the fill amount is 100 milliliters. And that's what Eaton uh, states to fill it with. A lot of people are dumping in two bottles of supercharger oil. I just got this from ZZ Performance too. I think it was $8.99 for two bottles, so it's pretty cheap. The dealership wanted 40 bucks, so definitely avoid that if you can. Now, what you're gonna be doing with the supercharger itself on your naturally aspirated build, you won't be using this sensor at all. This is pretty much decorative, but there's a hole underneath. So what some guys do is they'll actually put a screw part way in, they'll cut it off and they'll weld it. What I'm gonna do is just may as well just leave the sensor in to act as a plug because why not? That's fine, it'll do its job, but it will not be used at all. This nozzle here does get left open, open the atmosphere. Uh, on this build, you will not be using that at all. Some guys will put a rubber elbow just to keep water from getting in there. It's not really up to you, it's all up to preference. But that's pretty much it for the supercharger. And as for the bolts for the supercharger, um, for the manifold itself up here, there are four. I was missing one, so I just went to a local parts store. Luckily all this stuff is a M8 by uh, 1.25 thread, so it's all standard thread. It's very easy to find the bolts, you just gotta know where to get them. And they are metric bolts, so Bear in mind that as well. LSJ throttle body simply goes on the back here. It actually goes upside down. Most guys want to put it this way, but that's actually incorrect. It does go that way. Other things you're going to need, obviously, you're going to need the lower intake manifold itself. Now, this is the LSJ T map sensor. This does temperature and it does manifold air pressure of the uh, manifold itself after the supercharger compresses it and heats it up. So a lot of guys will use this style sensor. They'll use their stock style sensor, which is one bar on a 2007 naturally aspirated, but ZZ Performance sells a four bar. You need anything larger than two bar really for this build so that it can actually recognize what boost is. Now what I'm gonna be doing is using the stock style T-MAP sensor. Instead of a manifold air pressure, I'll also have that fourth pin. You can really see the pins. So there's four pins in there, and one of them does temperature. So I went online and I bought the pigtail for it. It's a very simple circuit, really. So this will just be a direct plug and play. Three of these wires will go to my stock MAP sensor, which is in my, my stock plastic manifold, which is there, the black plastic manifold has a one bar map in it. Those three wires get wired to this and wire number two, the second wire of this, will go to your manifold or your mass air flow, your mass sensor, which is in the cold air intake. So basically what happened after 2005 is that they integrated the IAT sensor with the mass sensor. So it's five wire instead of four. So your mass is the only thing that communicates intake air temperatures to your computer. So for the purposes of a tune, three of these wires from this sensor, since it's reading pressure and temperature, basically we're gonna be overriding the temperature sensor from the MAF with the temperature sensor reading from the TMAP in place of it. Now I have a Weapon R cold air intake for a cobalt. We're gonna make it fit in the Saturn. Um, 
I have a couple extra silicone couplers and tubes, so we'll make it work. That won't be too much of a challenge at all. We got lots of room in the engine bay on that side anyways. Just make sure your gasket's in good shape between your uh, supercharger and your throttle body, of course, and making sure that this rubber grommet's in good shape that connects to the bottom of the supercharger. Um, for the cooling system, your laminal the cores are in here, all that good stuff. Just give everything a good check over before you put it in. I've spent about four months consolidating all these parts, making sure they're good, and running through everything to make sure everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. Now I do have fuel injectors. Uh, these are easy performance, 60 foot or 60 pound hours. And the stock style is EV6. So this is a stock style connector. You want EV6 because it's direct plug and play. You won't need to buy a harness that way. There's a lot of aftermarket sensors that are EV1. Uh, ZZP sells EV1, but go for the EV6 because that will be directly plug and play with your factory harness, so you won't even need to worry about that. Now bear in mind when you're tuning, uh, there's a difference between 60 pound and 42 pound injectors and 80 pound injectors, etc. So you're gonna have to get your parameters correct. And it's gonna you're gonna have to adjust your AFR tables and everything like that accordingly too. Now I'm gonna be running a phenolic spacer. About eight millimeters thick or so. That basically sits between the intake manifold and the engine. Uh, keeps heat from transferring back and forth. It just makes it a little bit more efficient. Not too much of a big deal. You're gonna need the idler pulley. I'm gonna be replacing this pulley. Unfortunately, this pulley is only sold with the bracket at the dealership. So I cross-referenced uh, an AC Delco pulley. That's the exact same size and dimensions and has a similar groove pattern. So I'm gonna be trying that out to make sure that's okay too. Intercooler and intercooler pump bracket. You don't need the stock bracket for it, but it's good to replicate it because it's a good quality bracket. You can find them pretty cheap used. Um, I tested my pump before I used it. Uh, this pump is used. I tested it with a bucket of water. The water must be elevated above the pump and it, the water will flow down into the pump through here and it will spit out through this hose. So this is your inlet, this is your outlet. It's a simple uh, two pin connector that goes in there, which I have connected to a relay, which I made over here. Simple relay to power the intercooler pump. So I'll tap it into my fuse box panel. Uh, my ABS fuse is ignition hot. So I'm gonna be using one of these little guys to just basically send an on signal to turn the relay on. It will have a direct power source to the positive junction near my fuse box, which will have a 10 amp fuse in line with the main power going to the relay. Always put a fuse in, don't just draw direct power. Even though this does have a 30 amp relay in it, that's great and all, but you want a 10 amp because the pump only draws about two and a half amps, so you don't want anything more than 10 uh, going to your pump. And then the relay itself, the output's simple. You have one ground, um, and then your power and your ground for the intercooler pump also goes back into here. Well, the power goes to the relay. Uh, the negative of this, the negative of the uh, intercooler pump, you can ground wherever in your engine bay, or you, there's lots of bolts laying around. Just put one of these on the end of it too, and you'll be good to go. So that's that. Now I'm going to put on, you have to put the LSJ tensioner. This will make it a lot easier because this is a, a spacer for the alternator itself. So this will space it out properly so you can get the belt routing correct. Um, would recommend making sure your pulley is good. I replaced my pulley. Uh, I found them pretty cheap online. I think it was like $11, so I just went for it. Replace as much as you can while everything's apart. It'll make your life a lot easier. Going with an option B cooling tank. Same here. So that'll sit on the left side of the engine bay when you're staring at it from the front, so the passenger side of the car itself. Uh, this has to be as elevated as high as possible. The stock bracket will hold it up in place. And from my intercooler, which is, I don't have the, I have the stock LSJ uh, heat exchanger. And there's a barb fitting on the top. And that line at the top of the intercooler on the top passenger side of it, uh, that's an air breather line that will go into here. And that'll circulate the air out of the system. That's what makes option B um, a little nicer than the stock system. It's really more efficient at getting the air bubbles out of the cooling system itself. 
Uh, this line stays open, just it, it pukes if your thing overheats, and the bottom one will feed down into your T clamp, one of these guys, with your little T, and you will then have your circuit going for your laminate over core, your cooling elements, and then the other line going back to the, the intercooler pump itself, to the intercooler, back out of the intercooler, once it's nice and cool, then back into here once it's cold, and simple circuit from there. That's pretty much most of it, just another little thing, make sure you get the LSJ uh, upper rad hose. As you can see, it's got a pretty, pretty high curve in it. That's for the supercharger, so it actually uh, will fit around when it's in the engine bay. Uh, the stock one is just straight down at a 45-ish degree angle, so that'll interfere with it. So make sure you grab one of those too. Um, Actually, with cooling lines, uh, three quarter inch everything, pretty much. Lots of clamps. Just buy new new hoses. Don't reuse hoses if you don't have to. This stuff's really cheap, so just do it right and do it right the first time. Uh, this will be to the uh, my positive crankcase ventilation, so the top of my valve cover, and that'll go to the nozzle of the weapon R intake. It'll go into that guy to recirculate the air. So what some guys do, they'll just plug that up not use this and they'll put a, a breather on the uh, like a little a little mini filter on the end of the valve cover on the end of that stem so of course make sure you have your vacuum lines uh, to set up a boost gauge properly different sizes that you're going to need this is very small this bar back here at the top here you're going to have to use a very small hose to get on top of that now we clamp it down too you can route your circuit for your plumbing from there. So I hope this helps sort of paint a picture of all the parts you're going to need. As you can tell there's quite a bit, but there are some things that will make your life easier with this build. You don't need this, but this will make it easier. This is the LSJ dipstick tube. This was $25 Canadian at the dealership. It's the cheapest place to get it was actually at the dealer. So. And the dipstick, um, the level indicator itself that you pull out is the exact same, so it'll work with the LSJ one. So that's not an issue there. Uh, throttle body adapter. Instead of uh, decoding it and cutting and soldering wires around, uh, ZZP sells this for like 25 bucks. The guy just gave it to me with the kit that I bought it from. Um, they're pretty cheap and they help save time. As well, you're going to need a math extension because the cold air intake is going to be on the opposite side from the factory cold air intake of the Saturn ion anyway. Um, so you're going to need to extend that. It's literally just a wire extension. So when I have my harness here for my T-MAP sensor, I'm probably just going to split it directly into this guy right here to override that, uh, that temperature reading. So that's actually going to be communicating with my computer the temperature reading from the intake manifold over there, not from the mass air flow tube over there. Other little things to note, more box of goodies, uh, the belt, you're going to have to cut a rib off. This is the stock LSJ belt, so it's obviously going to fit. Um, so long as you have that tensioner and that idler pulley, you can use the stock LSJ belt. You're just going to have to cut one of those ribs off. I just took an X-Acto knife and traced it along the edge, it was very easy to do. Uh, the guy gave me one too with the kit. Um, I'm just going to put the new one on and have this as a spare in case anything happens. It's good to have a backup. Uh, get new gaskets. They're pretty cheap. The cheapest I could find. Uh, it's easy performance, honestly. I'm not sponsoring them or anything, but they've been the cheapest to find parts for, to be completely honest with you. So if you're running a phenolic spacer, uh, that this guy right here, you're going to need a gasket on both sides of it. A lot of people will just put that on and not even gasket, which is not really correct, not what you want to do. You can do it, but you know, you're boosting, so there's lots of positive pressure in that area. So that's not good either. As well, the supercharger gasket, make sure you replace that too and get a, a nice good seal on that. These are critical components, so make sure they're good to go. That's pretty much it. That's everything. Hopefully this helps clear a couple things up for you guys when you're envisioning all these parts together. Uh, what I did for a reference is, this is uh, from Beck's supercharger bill from his 2.4 liter, uh, I believe it's a cobalt, so I'm going to be mimicking that. 
I don't have an IAT. My MAF is integrated with an IAT, so it's inside of that. So this will be the stock MAP right here. And this will be my MAF sensor temperature reading that I'll be cutting into, if you will. And that's the four pin harness for the T-MAP. That is in the dealership. You can go in and ask for the service counter. They'll tell you exactly what, uh, what colors mean what for the MAP sensor. And for your uh, and for your master flow sensor too, so it'll make decoding a lot easier. Just to make your life easier, um, you're cutting the tan wire for the math for the temperature reading. And what I did, I just option B routing. ZZP has their manual for it, so it's good to help. This is a perfect schematic right here, um, a perfect layout on sort of how the option B coin works. There's lots of stuff available online. Just consolidate everything. So that before you go to install it, you know exactly what's happening. Uh, ZZP has their supercharger parts list. So I reference a lot of the bolt sizes off of this. Now, for the bolts for this, for this intake manifold here, it is M8. That's what the LSJ uses, M8. Um, the stock ones are M6. So your options are to either drill up to M8 and then re-thread the standard thread, 1.25, or, or, you get M6 bolts and do the same thing. Now M8 is a lot stronger, so that's obviously more advisable. But what I'm going to be doing to confirm that this works and that everything's up and running, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use M6 bolts just to get it going. And I didn't use the uh, I didn't use the stock lengths. I got a little bit longer because I'm using that phenolic spacer, right? So it's spaced out about eight millimeters. So I got a little bit more length. So that when these stick out through the manifold into the engine block, you have more thread to actually grab into the engine block. So just be weary of that and keep that in mind too. So I have M6 bolts, automotive grade, and then M8 bolts too for the manifold. So one day when I confirm this is up and running good to go, um, I'll take the supercharger and the intake manifold off. I'll drill the engine block, go up to M8, retap it, get it nice and strong, good to go. But in case all of this blows up and doesn't work, the PlayStation, it's my daily driver. I'm going to use the M6 bolt, so if it really all goes to hell, nothing works. It shouldn't, but always play it safe. Um, I'll just use the M6 bolts. I can just undo them and then re-bolt everything that is stock onto it. So I'm using HP tuners for my tune. Uh, we already unlocked my computer and downloaded my stock tune file, and we have it saved. That way... If this all goes to hell, we didn't just reload the stock tune in the computer and put on all the stock components. Now this should work. This should be fine. I got a really good guy um, who works at a local performance shop. He's going to be helping me out with the tune. Don't do it yourself. Way too much you have to know. Way too. It's very, very picky. So you want to get it right. And that's pretty much most of it. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. I'll try to respond to them as quickly as I can. And of course, I'm going to upload a video after this is all in the actual car itself so that you guys have an idea of what it looks like when it's all in and good to go. Sorry this took a little longer than I thought it would, but hopefully this helps people out. Hopefully this uh, answers a lot of questions that you might have had. Thank you.